What's up everybody? Joe Prime here. Welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at some of the mods that I'm using to do the solo playthrough of Valheim. See if there's anything you like. If you are interested in any of them, there will be links down in the description below, right next to the like and subscribe button. So go ahead and check all of that out. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first mod we're going to take a look at affects the UI. So you may have already noticed a few things on screen that are a little bit different. So you'll notice uh, over on our equipment list, we have colored durability lines. So these are green if they're good, then they turn orange, then they turn red when they get down to the bottom. Also have an automatic ammo counter for any of your tools or equipment or weapons that use ammo. And then the icon will change to show what's currently equipped. Over on the map side, you notice there's an in-game timer now, so you can see what time of day it is, as well as a day counter, so you can see how many days you've been playing. And then down underneath the map, you have your wind forecast, which shows you which way the wind's going to change, as well as a weather forecast. So in 27 minutes, it's going to start raining. And then it takes all of your status FXs, puts them down underneath the map, and shrinks them up a little bit so they're all in one place and it takes up a little less screen space. Now, some other things that this mod adds is the ability to hover over your chest and see what's inside of them. Without having to actually open it, you can see what you've got stored where. And then certain things like when you hover over a bee's nest or if you hover over various cooking things that are active, it'll give you a little timer of how much time is left for those to complete. Next one we're going to take a look at here is pretty simple, but uh, something that I think should be in the default game. It is especially helpful if you play with a controller, as I do and that is called Auto Shield. You notice if we come up here and equip a weapon, we also automatically equip the best shield we have in our inventory. And this works with any one-handed weapon. So as soon as you equip it, it equips your shield, unequip it, and it unequips your shield. If you equip a two-handed weapon, obviously it does not equip a shield, but then you can go back to a one-handed weapon and get your shield out super quick and easy. And the next two are gonna have to do with uh, inventory management and base upkeep. So the first one is called Unlimited Fuel, which just automatically keeps all of your fires, all of your torches, anything that would normally require to be refueled, keeps them at 100% all the time. So you'll notice these torches over here have full fuel. All of this cooking equipment and fires have full fuel. It also works for your smelters and various other refining equipment as well. Keeping in line with that, the next one we're gonna take a look at is called Craft From Containers. And that allows you to use anything that's inside your storage. It'll be usable from any station. So if we want to go ahead and cook something, we can cook based on what's in our storage. If we want to go over to our forge and craft something, we can craft based on what's in our storage as well. And that just makes it so that you're not constantly having to go to a chest, put everything in your inventory, go to the forge, put everything you don't need back in your chest. Just it saves a lot of time by anything that's in your base in your storage is available at any of your crafting or cooking stations right off the bat. All right, so the next one I wanna show you is something called Gooder Recycling, and this works by allowing you to take items you no longer need. So if we were to grab, for example, this cultivator, you notice we have two of them already. Don't really need to have two of them. You can go ahead and pick it up, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and it turns it back into the resources that were used to craft it. So also refund any resources that were used to upgrade it, and it works on any crafted item. So anything that you've made, you can go in and turn it back into its raw resources. This helps a lot with not having to have somewhere to dump everything or trying to take it out into the middle of a field and drop it so it despawns. You can just turn it back into those original resources and move on. And speaking of making life easier, next thing we're going to take a look at is one called Fascinating Carry Weight. This does is allow some of your skills to actually affect your carry weight. This is fully customizable, and I have it set up to kind of follow things that you would need more carry weight for, or what allow you to have more carry weight. Um, so jumping, wood cutting, running, swimming, uh, pickaxes, fishing, things like that, will, or how I have it set up to adjust your carry weight. And those give you little percentages based on how high those skills are. you notice over here we have a total carry weight of 581, which is a lot higher than the base game, even with 
the belt. And that makes life a lot easier, and it also makes skills a little bit more interesting in my opinion. So things that you normally wouldn't spend too much time leveling up actually give you an even better bonus than just making that skill more effective. So now we're out here at the farm, and there's uh, actually two different mods that I use to make farming a little easier and a little more interesting. First one is called Plant Everything, and that does exactly what it says on the box. Obviously you have your regular crops that are plantable in the base game. But this allows you to plant things such as blueberry bushes, raspberry bushes, thistle, mushrooms, whatever you normally would have to keep track of and go out in the world. If you collect enough of them, you can actually bring them back and plant them in your own garden and then have them there. Again, this one's fully customizable. You can turn on and off different things that you want to have planted. You can also do things like plant uh, dandelions. You can plant different trees that aren't normally plantable. You can plant decorations. So if you want to put flowers or rocks or uh, fallen trees, dead trees, stuff like that. There's a lot of options available with this one as well. The other thing it does is allow you to choose biome limitations. So you'll notice we have some Mistlands exclusive items that are planted out here in the plains. And I think that just makes life a lot easier instead of having to go back to the Mistlands and set up a farm and then put teleporters in. You just plant these down here in the plains and have everything that you need in one vast farming empire. Now, the other one that I mentioned, uh, it's called Plant Easily, and that allows you to have grids and set up quantities for things that you want to have planted. So if we were to go through here and let's say pick up some of this barley, and we can equip our cultivator, switch over to barley. And you notice that it's putting it in a line and a grid, and it's also snapping to what's already there. We go ahead and turn this down to, let's say, three. Put one there, rotate it around, and boom. Now we've got new barley waiting to grow. And it automatically spaces it out, so it has the correct amount of space to grow. And as you can see, it snaps to existing grids as well. And it just makes planting a lot easier and a lot faster. All right, next one we're going to take a look at here is called Everything Tameable. Um, this does allow you to set every mob in the game to be tameable or not. So you could have a farm full of enemies. You could have uh, even bosses are tameable with this moss mod. It actually does a lot, and I have a lot of it turned off. So I have it set down to just the four base tameable items, which are the locks, the chickens, the wolves, and the boars. One of the cool things that I really like about it is it puts in kind of different genetic modifiers. So you can see the different colors and different hues, different sizes that automatically generate within the world. And then you can breed them to bring them all into a certain size or a certain color that you're looking for. So it adds a little bit of kind of uh, like arc taming and breeding into Valheim. And then it also gives you the ability to set uh, animals to be controllable if you want. So for example, these boars, much like the wolves, you set them to follow and they'll follow you around. Same thing with the chickens. And that just kind of makes it a lot easier to manage them and keep them maintained. Next one we're going to take a look at is called Auto Feed. This allows you to put a chest inside your pens, fill it up with the food that the animals would eat, and they will automatically walk over to the chest and feed themselves so that you don't have to manually go in and keep their own food in there or hope that it doesn't despawn, etc. You just put it in the chest, the animals will take care of their own feeding. And then finally, this one's a little more difficult to show off, but there is one called Station Custom Ranges, which allows you to increase the active range of your various stations. I find this to be most useful for the stone cutter. So instead of having to place multiple stone cutters around in order to get all of your stone walls and things like that, you can place one, extend the range out to how big you want your base to be, and then you only need one stone cutter to do it. So for example, you notice we have one stone cutter down here in the basement, and with that single stone cutter I was able to place this entire outer wall, even though it's quite far away from the stone cutter down in the basement, as well as extend it out so that I could put this entire stone path all the way down to the dock over here. Again, from that one single stone cutter in the basement. Those are all the mods that I am currently using for the solo Valheim experience. Found any of them useful? Please go ahead and check the links in the description to add them to your own game. While you're down there as well, click on the like button and subscribe button. Join along as we will be starting a brand new Valheim series to go all the way from beginning to the Ashlands, and I will be using all of these mods during that playthrough. Appreciate you guys for watching, and I will see you on the next video.